150. And when you have it, it is custom in our house that everyone to stand. We want to read this Psalm of David to understand what David was trying to convey to the Lord. The little ruddy boy who was transitioned to the shepherd, who then transitioned to be the warrior. And then God transitioned him to be the king over all of Israel. But the one thing about David, he always knew who his God was. He understood that I got to give God the praise because God has been so good to me. Hallelujah. Everyone, we should read it all together with the fervency and with the tenacity that we want to give God the best praise that we can give him. And when we get to the crescendo or the end of the climax of the psalm where it says, let everything that have breath, I need everybody to give God the best praise that he deserves on this morning. If today was your last day, I want you to give God the praise like he deserves. Hallelujah. Let's read it all together. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the slow cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. This is it. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, shut up. Come on, give God the best praise that you can give him. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Oh, hallelujah. Give him the glory. He deserves all praise and honor. God, we bless you at this place. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift your name up, God. You are so good to us, oh God. The enemy wanted to destroy the church for 95 years. You have blessed us, oh God. You have kept us, oh God. You are so good to us, oh God. When we are not good to ourselves, oh Lord. Thank you for having mercy on us. Matter of fact, thank you for having pity on us, oh God. We understand it's not by our grace, not by our mercy, but it's by the grace and mercy of you, God. We bless you. And we praise your holy name because you are so good and your mercy is everlasting and the truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah be to God. At this time, we are going to go forward to hear a word for the Lord. Y'all know it's a word in this place on today, right? Amen. Amen. At this time, we have a wonderful preacher. He is the assistant pastor of the Greater Refuge Church at the Mother Church in Harlem, New York. He is the husband of one wife, three children, hallelujah. He is also the International Convention Committee Chairman who does a wonderful job. If you are enjoying our international conventions, he is the one that is setting them up, him and his team, hallelujah. They've done the one, he is a great preacher, a great man of God, and I want you to sit attentively and be praying for him as the word comes forth on this morning. Let's give God praise for Bishop William Wilkins Jr. as he comes and gives the word to us. Father God, we come before you today to say thank you. God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you, God, because you have been so good to us. Lord God, we thank you, God, for your everlasting love. God, we thank you, God, because in spite of ourselves, you have been good. Lord, now we ask that you would bless us and touch us and forgive us, Father, for our sins. Anything we may have said or did or thought that was not pleasing your sight, God, we ask that you would forgive us and count us worthy to escape and make us better. Father, we ask now that you would send your anointing and let it rest in this place. God, we ask that you would allow us to experience, Lord God, what only a gathering of the saints can produce. Lord, we ask that your healing and your... Uh, spiritual virtue 
will be upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, we ask that you would bless this church, bless the pastor. Lord God, we ask now that you would move me out of the way. Speak to these, your people. If there be any sick among us, we ask now that you would touch right now. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We speak peace and joy and strength and hope through the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God the best praise you've got. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together. And give God praise because he is worthy on this morning. Certainly we do count it an honor and a privilege to be with you on this Sunday morning. Amen. Another time that the Lord has allowed us to be in his presence. I certainly do praise and thank God because we feel the presence of God. The Bible declares where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we praise and thank God for the liberty that we find in Jesus Christ. We praise and thank God, amen, for the under-shepherd of this house, amen, the honorable uh, bishop, amen. That's my first time in public, amen, having the opportunity to, uh, uh, to call him a bishop in the Lord's church. What a tremendous honor and privilege, and we praise and thank God for your shepherd, Bishop Vaughn McCray Sr. Come on, you can do better than that. Got your pastor, your leader. We praise and thank God for him, and we praise and thank God for his brotherhood. Uh, fellowship with him down through the years. I consider him a big brother in the Lord, and amen. We praise and thank God for his wisdom and his uh, strength, and certainly to his lovely wife, and we praise and thank God for her, and we praise and thank God for all of the elders, uh, district elders, and amen, uh, elders and uh, ministers. We praise and thank God for you who are here with us today, and all of the people of God to our musicians, and uh, we praise and thank God uh, for you, and we praise and thank God uh, for uh, Sister Rachel, amen, who is a uh, work along with us in the Lord, and uh, I understand she's getting ready to jump the broom, and we celebrate you and praise and thank God for you and the entire first family, amen, to your uh, expected husband-to-be, amen, and uh, to my dear brother, uh, Elder Vaughn McCray Jr., we praise and thank God for him and the entire family, amen, uh, we Glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for you uh, and all that God has done and continues to do in your life. Uh, one songwriter said, the Lord is blessing me right now. You may not be able to see what the Lord is doing for me, but the Lord is blessing me right now. Be not dismay, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Anybody is being taken care of and kept by Jesus Christ on this morning? Amen. I've come to tell you today, amen, uh, church is not a show. It is not a display of, amen, uh, performance on the stage. And if you ask me, uh, that is a part of the challenge that the church is facing now. Amen. Uh, we treat the church like it's a show. Uh, and the, we have moved from praying at the altar and made the pulpit a stage. Uh, but I've come to declare that the redeemed of the Lord, amen, should say so. Whom he have redeemed from the hands of the enemy. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. I certainly do salute this church in your uh, church anniversary. Uh, I praise and thank God for you extending uh, the uh, honor uh, of me coming to celebrate you uh, on today. There are a few people on a very short list uh, that I will leave Refuge Temple on a Sunday morning for. Amen. And uh, your pastor makes that short list, very, very short list of, of people. Amen. Uh, but he's been a friend 
uh, down through the years, a brother. And I don't know if I had an opportunity or they told him, but I'm very proud of what God has done. Amen. I preached for him in Camden, New Jersey. Amen. Where probably one section of this church would have been the entire sanctuary. Uh, but God expanded him, not because of anything other than, amen, his faithfulness. And we praise and thank God for that. We praise and thank God for what God is doing in his life and continues to do. Amen. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Keep your eyes on him. Amen. Because God is doing great things in his life. Uh, won't be before you long. Uh, let's go to the word of the Lord in Philippians chapter number three. Familiar passage of scripture. Want to read it into your hearing uh, on today. Uh, Philippians chapter number three. We'll begin reading at verse number seven. Reads on this wise from the King James Version. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching to those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I want to read that same text from the New Living Translation. Listen to this. I was so zealous and I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I, uh, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting them as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obedience of the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I 
uh, want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing his death. So that I, uh, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection of the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on purpose that uh, perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. I want to use from these passages of scripture and I thought it was important to read both translations of it. Um, you know, some folks uh, only like the King James Version. One mother said to me once, uh, I was preaching or teaching and sharing from another translation and she said, Bishop, that version is all right, but I like the one that Jesus used. He used King James Version. Said, Mother, I didn't think Jesus used any version. He was the word, but we'll go on from that. But amen. Uh, I want to talk to you today from the thought, I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. The truth of the matter is, is that no one likes to lose. Uh, if you're like me, I can be a bit of a sore loser. Uh, never, never really like to lose at anything. As a matter of fact, when people tell me I can't do something, I do all I can to prove that through God, yes, I can. I have experienced those who have doubted me and my ability to do whatever it is that God has enabled me to do. Not arrogantly or from an arrogant approach, but from an approach that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The fact of the matter is, is that when one loses, one feels a sense of defeat, feels a sense of uh, depravity, and heaviness. No one wants to go through life feeling as if you can't accomplish one thing or the other. Sometimes life can beat you up. Life can, amen, uh, make you stop pursuing your goal once you have lost some things. Life has a way of trying to limit you, especially people of our pigmentation. We have been limited uh, by the world society to say what we can and what we cannot do. So we should take that as a challenge. We should take that as an opportunity for us to prove that God is able. Losing can be depressing. It can come with a sense of heaviness. You know how it is when you, amen, get up in the morning and you expect everything to go well. But yet the things that you try your best to do seem not to go your way. You know the experience of applying for uh, a job, amen, and to find out that they gave it to someone who was less qualified, perhaps looked a little different from you, perhaps, amen, uh, uh, younger than you, perhaps just simply because uh, they uh, uh, played a certain level of politics that you were just not willing to play. No one wants to feel that sort of loss. And again, that sort of loss can have a toll on you. 
No one wants to enter into a marriage, man, just to lose in the marriage. No one wants to get married today and three, five years later end up in divorce court. No one wants to lose. No one wants to feel the sense of not being able to accomplish what you believe God has placed inside of you. But I also do want you to know that all loss is not bad loss. That there's some loss that we experience in life that are good. Well, the first thing that we should first understand is the word of God when it declares, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. So the first reality is that even when it feels like we have lost, we are not losers. That God has placed something in, on the inside of you. Amen. And when we realize that God is the great puppet master, and oftentimes he's behind the scenes pulling things together even though you may not realize it. Even when you feel the sense of loss, when you feel the sense that God has forgotten about you, God is behind the scenes pulling it all together for your good. There, there are some loss again that, amen, we experience that, that a good loss. You know, you know, perhaps if you lose weight, losing weight is not always a bad thing. Perhaps it may be a bad thing for those who are not trying to lose weight, but most folks are trying to lose weight. So when you lose a couple of pounds, it's certainly a good thing. Uh, it is also, amen, a good thing uh, and I, I know that, amen, uh, we may not feel it, but some loss are also good loss because some death in some situations can be a sense of relief. If, if, if you've ever experienced someone who has had to go through the sicknesses and perhaps cancer, perhaps, amen, uh, other terminal diseases, and taking them back and forth to the doctor and watching them be sick through chemotherapy and having to deal with the ins and outs of, amen, the challenges that come along with those sorts of things, even though you don't want them to go, you love them enough, amen, to bow your head in humble submission and say, yes, Lord, this is God's will. Some loss are not, amen, uh, uh, ground shaking in our lives. But it is important for us to understand it. Listen to what Jesus says about loss in the Gospels. In Matthew gospel, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16, and verse number 24, he says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man comes after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Listen to verse number 25. For whatsoever things will, uh, so whosoever will uh, save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life shall find it. For what profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? Jesus makes it abundantly clear, amen, that there are some laws that are necessary for the kingdom of God. He says, amen, in Matthew's gospel, once again, chapter number 19, uh, uh, Matthew points in on this uh, 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 idea of loss to these uh, Hebrews that he is writing to. He says to them in uh, uh, verses number 16 through verses number 20, amen. He says to them uh, in verse number 16, And behold, one man came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may uh, have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why calleth me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou will enter into life, keep my commandments. And he said unto him, Jesus, uh, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt commit 
uh, not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. Thou shall honor thy mother and thy father. Thou shall not, or thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, all these things I have done for my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect, go and sell. Lose it all. Sell, sell everything that thou have and give it to the poor. And thou shalt have great riches in heaven. Come and follow me. Verse number 22, a sad commentary. But when the young man heard this saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. There, there, it seems to me that, that, that from the word of God, from the very initial, amen, descent of Jesus in his earthly ministry, he, he, he emphasized this idea of loss. That, that the true child of God must be willing to lose some things in order to walk with God. I, I, I know we're living in a day and time where people believe that you can do whatever you want to do. And amen, still be a child of God. The truth be told, the way that the new church is telling it, hell is going to be a very, amen, empty place. Because it seems like everybody's going to heaven. Man, you can do what you want to do. You can have what you want to have. You can act the way you want to act. You can live the way you want to live and still make it into the kingdom. But according to my Bible, amen, uh, the Bible declares to me, amen, that this is a, a straight and narrow path. Amen. The old folks used to say it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Man, so Jesus explains this to them. Our, our text brings us to this important lesson that the Apostle Paul is sharing now here in the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, we know that this is one of the Apostle Paul's prison uh, epistles, and he is sharing with them this important text. Man, the Apostle Paul, uh, who is the pastor of this church, great man of God. We know the steps of the Apostle Paul, but the Apostle Paul finds himself now in a Roman prison. Now in a Roman prison and experiencing the challenges of life. Man, and I want to declare to you today, beloved of God, that if you keep on serving God, you will experience challenges in life. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how righteous you are. I don't care how wonderful you think you are. I don't care how wonderful you sing, how great of a preacher you are. You will experience, experience challenges in this life. Well, some of you may not believe that. You say, preacher, I'm living for God. I'm doing the best that I possibly can. And I, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do any of those things. But my Bible declares they that would live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I wish I had half a church in here this morning. It's important for you to understand that no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been saved, whether or not your name, a man appears on the wall, whether or not you were here when the church began or not means absolutely nothing to the enemy. The enemy will come after you because the enemy wants to distract you from your purpose in God. So the Apostle Paul, great man of God. He writes at least uh, 13 to 14 of the epistles, a man that we see in the New Testament. See this great man of God who is God's chosen, but yet he experiences challenges in life. Bible says amen for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul finds himself now in prison. What is the pastor supposed to do? He's pastoring a thriving church. He's pastoring a church, amen, that is known throughout the city. Man, this church, amen, is highly regarded. We see this church even in the book of Revelations. Man, the handprint of the Apostle Paul is on this church. Amen. In the book of Revelation that is commended in the book of Revelation. 
We see that this is not some uh, new startup church, but this is an established church with sound doctrine. But yet the pastor is going through. You know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month or Clergy Appreciation Month, and we don't love on our clergy enough as we should. I didn't hear anything. Hello, lights. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't appreciate our clergy as we should. But I've come to tell you, if you're going to preach this gospel and stand up for Jesus Christ, it is not an easy thing to do. So the Bible declares, amen, that the Apostle Paul is in prison. The Bible says that his church in Philadelphia finds out that the Apostle Paul is in prison. Because they love their pastor, they send one of the trusted individuals by the name of Aphrodite. They sent Aphrodite, amen, 800 miles, man, to go and see about their pastor in uh, this Roman prison. The Bible says, amen, that when they get to the Apostle Paul, they have a conversation with him, amen, and Aphrodite first wants them to know, amen, the Apostle to know, number one, pastor, we love you. Man, I'm just going to put this note in here. Hey Amen. When is the last time you told your pastor and the clergy that you love and appreciate them? They need to hear it. I didn't hear anything. I'm, I'm in the right church on this morning. Hey Amen. I've come to tell you it's important that you share with the clergy how much you care for them and appreciate them. Bible says amen that he not only tells them that he loves him but he also shares with him a financial gift in chapter number four verses 10 through 18 we see amen that he shares with him uh that the church is doing well man and he goes to encourage the apostle paul Man, and when the Apostle Paul is there, amen the Apostle Paul finds him and he begins to thank him for his message the Apostle Paul does, amen, a complete turnaround. Man, he, he does a complete turnaround. Have you ever went to visit someone in the hospital and you went to encourage them, but you left encouraged? Have you ever went to share something with someone who should be discouraged, but yet you, amen, they end up encouraging you? This is what happens in the life of the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul goes to encourage them, man, uh, or they go to encourage the Apostle Paul, but yet the Apostle Paul ends up encouraging them. He begins to turn the tables in the conversation. Man, after hearing the report, he thanks them for their report, but he tells them of the good news. Tells them, hey, amen, don't be deceived by these chains. Don't allow my current situation for you to be discouraged. This was the theme that the Apostle Paul used in many of his writings. You'll see that he uses this same theory, this same mindset, even with Timothy. He tries to encourage Timothy because Timothy is young in the gospel. And when the Apostle Paul is locked up for the final time, he shares with Timothy. And tells Timothy, amen, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Preach, reprove, amen, rebuke, amen, uh, uh, stand up for righteousness sake. So the apostle Paul shares with them this good news. He shares with them, amen, and lets them know that yes, this is a fight. The apostle Paul turns the table and begins to talk to them about, amen, the joy he is experiencing in suffering. And I've come to declare to you on this morning that even though you may be going through some things, uh, doesn't mean you have to walk around with your head hung low. You can make the devil out of a lie and let the devil know that even if I'm going through, I'm going through with God. I've come to declare to somebody who may be going through something on this morning, just let somebody know I'm going through, but I'm going through with God. Oh, yes, Lord, I'm. I'm going through with God. So he shares with them the importance of them still having joy. Amen. For them to rejoice. As a matter of fact, this epistle is uh, one of Paul's most intimate epistles because he shares with them his innermost feelings. 
shares with him, amen, with them the fact, amen, that even though he has been through hell, even though he has been shipwrecked, even though, amen, he has experienced great turbulence in his life, man, but he serves a God who is able. I have to come to declare to someone today, beloved of God, that regardless of what you're going through, you should be able to stand and say, for God I live and for God I die. Apostle Paul, amen, shares with them the true message, amen, of his salvation. Not only, amen, is he uh, in this situation, but the Apostle Paul wants them to know, amen, that, uh, uh, that yes, he has experienced some loss. He has experienced some things, but that the loss that he has experienced was necessary. Man, that, that, that yes, he has experienced some things in his life that would make the average person run away from God. But yet, the Apostle Paul points out that I'm encouraged to stay with the Lord. And I've come to encourage someone on this morning who is going through hell and high water. But some way, somehow, you are still encouraged to stay with God. Ah, uh, yes, Lord, that, 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 that you realize that trouble don't last always. You realize, amen, that the more you go through, the more God encourages you in your go through. I wish I had some witnesses in the house on this morning. That yes, I have experienced some loss and I have experienced some trouble in my life. Amen, but I realize that weeping may endure for the night. But joy will come in the morning time. I have experienced some difficulty in my life. Ah, uh, but yet God is going to see me through. Amen. And so what the Apostle Paul wants them to understand is that loss is necessary. Amen. For them to have an experience with God. And so what the Apostle Paul says to them, he says, amen. But uh, whatsoever thing that would gain to me, I count them loss for who? For Christ. Uh, and so there are some things that happen in our lives that you must lose for Christ's sake. Uh, and there are times in our lives where it seems as if uh, we're losing the battle, we're losing the fight. Uh, but God wants you to know, beloved, uh, that all loss is not bad. Uh, I may have lost some friends, uh, but I still have my joy. Uh, I may have lost some people, uh, but I still have my joy. Uh, I may be in this thing some days, uh, and I may feel by myself, uh, but I still have my joy. Uh, I dare somebody look at somebody and let them know I still have my joy. I still have my joy. I, I still have it. I still have it. I'm not, I may be down, but I'm not out. I may be broken, but I'm not a man of despair. Amen. I still have my joy because I serve a God who sees everything. He said, amen. I had to lose it for Christ. Man, I've come to declare to you, amen, that there are some things that you're going to have to lose in order to work with God. In order to walk with him, you may have to lose some friends. You may have to lose, amen, some people. You may have to lose, amen, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a relationship that you don't want to lose. You know, I don't understand this new church. Amen. They don't want to lose anything. Amen. They have a mentality. God, you have to accept me the way that I am or no way at all. But I've come to tell you that God is not going to play spiritual games with you. Amen. You have to be willing to lose some things for the cause of Christ. Man, he says, amen, uh, in verse number seven, he said, but what things I have gained unto me, I count them as loss. Yet, doubtless, I count all things but loss. Listen to this. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ my Lord. In other words, amen, what he's saying, for my spiritual maturity, 
I had to lose some things. It, it, it is the same concept, amen, that you see that Job display, uh, displays in his writing, amen. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Same God. The same God that gave it, the same God took it away. Here comes spiritual maturity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, you've got to be willing to lose some things in your walk with God. Man, he says, hey man, for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I could not know him without going through the troubles of life. Could not really understand him without knowing who he is. I've come to tell you today, man, if you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to get used to losing some things. Man, but the good news is, says amen, for I have suffered loss all things and do count them as dung that I may win. Whew. When am I winning? I'm winning Christ. Ah, yes, Lord. And I come to declare to you on this morning that I know it may feel like you're losing. But God told me to declare to you on this morning that you are on the winning side. That although it may seem like you have lost, you are a winner in God. Amen. That God is about to make you the head and not the tail. God is about to make you above only and not beneath but you've got to declare to the enemy that I will win because I'm on the winning side. That I am more than a conqueror. I wish I had a church in here on this morning. That I will come through, amen, this trouble. Amen, because God is on my side. And if God be for me, then who can be against me? And I've come to declare to somebody on this morning that you are a winner because God said you're a winner. And I know that it seems like you have lost some things, but God wants you to know that you're still a winner. That with God on your side, you can say it like the songwriter said, I've had some good days. And I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. Hallelujah. And I won't complain. Close your mouth. Put your seatbelt on and realize that you are a winner because God is on your side and if God is for you there's no devil in hell that can stop you you are a winner you are a winner God is bringing you through tell yourself I am a winner and I'm on the winning side even though it may seem like I may have to cry one songwriter said trouble in my way I may have to cry sometime I live awake at night but that's all right because jesus will fix it after a while come on church tell the devil i will not die i will not keep myself quiet because i'm on the winning side i'm on the winning side somebody say yeah yes lord yeah He says that I may, that I may know him. That, 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 that's the reason, that's the reason that I may know him. That, that, that's why I'm going through it, that I may know him. I'm not cursed that I may know him. 
Don't let any devil in hell tell you you're under some generational curse. That's the biggest lie under the pit of hell. You can't be saved and cursed at the same time. That I may know him. That, that, that's why you're going through it. That I may know him. I, I can't know him any other way. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. I, I, I've got to know and experience the power of God. That I may know him. Beloved of God, your trouble is bringing you closer to God. Your situation is pulling you closer. Your trials are bringing you closer. That I may know him. Why, why, why are you crying? Why are you going through that? I may know him. It may hurt. It may be painful, but it's that I might know him. You're on the winning side. You're, you're, you're on the winning side. I count it all loss. I'm losing, but I'm gaining at the same time. It's a bit of an oxymoron. Because what looks like loss to you is always heaven's gain. What may look like defeat to you is always God's, amen, prosperity. God's economy is not the world's economy. May lose some friends but I gain Christ. I may lose some people. I may lose some influence, but I, but I gain influence in heaven. May have lost a promotion, but I gain something greater on the other side. That I might know him. Anybody ask you, What's going on in your life? Just tell him that I might know him. That, that, that's the plan. That's the purpose. That I might know him. I guess that's why the old mothers used to grab that tambourine when I was a kid, amen, in devotional service and start singing songs like, I'm running for my life. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? You tell him I'm saved. That I may know him. And I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. It's all a part of the process. Of me knowing him. I'm, I'm, I know it may seem like you're losing. But God told me to tell you refuge. You are on the winning side. It's too late to switch. It's too late to switch. The Lord is soon to come. Look at what's happening in Israel right now. The handwriting is on the wall. The Lord is soon to come. It's no time to switch. It's no time to get weak in the faith. It's no time to trade in, amen, what you know for what may be the truth. That I might know him. He says, I, I count it all lost that I might win. Look, 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 he says, he says that I might know him. He says, I want you to understand that, that, that the objective, amen, is knowing. Listen, he says, amen, uh, I count all things uh, uh, but, uh, but dung that I may, listen to this, win Christ. I, I, I lost, but I'm a winner. I, 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 I lost, but 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 I won. Can, 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 can you imagine? Can you imagine? Amen. Elder McCray going. Amen. Uh, running in a relay race. And, 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 and you come in last. 
But when you come in last, you're jumping up and rejoicing. How can the loser still rejoice? That doesn't, doesn't make any sense. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. God's economy is different from the world's economy. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't function the same way. I lost. But I won. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm losing in life. It looks like I'm being defeated. It looks like everybody else is getting ahead of me. By the world's economy, by the world's statistics, by what everyone sees and even what I see, I'm losing. I count it all as young. I lost it all. That I might win. I'm, 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 what, I, what, I, what I want you to understand this morning is that losing is necessary to win. That, that this is, is a part of God's way of doing things. You, 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 you need another winner. You need another uh, 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 a view of this. Well, well, look at the Apostle Paul. When the Apostle Paul was on the ship going, amen, uh, uh, and they told him that he would have to stand before Caesar, amen, he decided he wanted to go, and amen, and what we see, the Apostle Paul, the Bible says that a storm breaks out on the ship. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says the Apostle Paul on the ship, Everything was lost. But the Apostle Paul had a word that you will teach and preach in Rome. Everything was lost. But the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, the Bible declares, uh, excuse me, in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul says, amen. Uh, everything that was lost, all that cargo was lost but you will win. How, how, how can I still make it to my destination when I get there, everything is lost? How, how can I win when everything that I have is gone? That doesn't seem like winning to me. I, I, but, 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 but it's necessary to get you to your destination. He said, I, 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 I have counted all loss so that I can win. Beloved of God, you are a winner. A winner. You've just got to change your language. You've got to change the way you see it. How can, Bishop, you don't, you clearly, you don't understand what I'm going through. I just got an eviction notice. I'm losing my house. I'm losing my job. I'm losing my, my, my family. My children are running amok. How can I be a winner? Well, it depends on what you're looking at. Because if you're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, all of this is teaching you how to pray. Teaching you how to fast. It's building you up spiritually. So what are you really losing? You're on the winning side. God will take care of you. Everything that God has promised you, he's going to bring it to pass. You are on the winning side. You are more than a conqueror because you're on the winning side. Would you stand to your feet if you will on this morning? I want you to know something that God has promised you that you are a winner. You're not losing, you're winning. You've got to convince yourself that although I'm losing, it looks like I'm losing, I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning team. I went to my son's football game on Friday. When I got there, his team, the other team was up. Six, and his team had zero. 
I had to preach on Friday night, so I got there late. I don't like to miss my son's game, but amen. But I had an obligation, so I had to stick with it. When I got there, his team was down zero. When I came in, I could see that they were a bit heavy because it looks like their team was about to lose the game. You know, and I, I must admit, I don't like to see my son disappointed. So I began to pray that God would shift the atmosphere. Man, and I, I must admit, I may have had a little advantage on the other team because I knew something about God that they didn't know. That you can be down and out on one end. But God knows how to shift things. God knows how to turn things around. I began to pray for my boy and his team. Amen. And not moments later, they scored a touchdown. It shifted the atmosphere. But when it shifted the atmosphere, I not only saw, amen, the points change on the screen. I also saw a shift in their attitude. They realized that it is now possible for us to win. God sent me here today not to shout you, not to, not to make you feel good, but God sent me here today to shift the atmosphere. To let you know that it is possible to still win. I don't know. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I don't care what the scoreboard says. God told me to tell you that it is still possible for you to win. I know that it feels like you've been defeated. Seems like everyone is advancing but you. But God said it is still possible for you to win. I, 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 I promise I'm going to take my seat, but I, I, I can't get to everybody. But, but, but I, I would love it. I would love it for those of you who really believe it in your heart and in your spirit. Amen. And I know that some of us are, are, are kind of, you know, concerned about COVID and all of that. And, 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 you know, you don't have to hug them. Amen. But would you just leave from where you are and tell three people it's still possible for you to win? Would you, would you, would you do that? Would you just?